Thursday, November 8th. Is that right? November 8th, 2018. Uh, the time is uh, 732 or 1932. This is the monthly meeting of the Beach Grove Redevelopment Commission for November. I would ask our members starting to my far right to introduce themselves. Paul Kaiser. Tara Wolf. Kathy Chapel, Secretary. Mark Graham. Donald Webb, President. And Ron Moak could not be with us tonight. He's our Vice President. Uh, we will start off with the net minutes from the last month's meeting. Um, I would ask if there's any additions, corrections, and if not, I would ask for a motion to approve as written and read. I'll make motion to accept and read. Second. There's the reading. Okay. Yeah, sorry. That's fine. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Not the minutes are passed. Um, we did not have an invoice for billing, but I assume we did get bills. Uh, so the suggestion of the Mayor Buckley was that I make a motion that we approve to pay the bills. But um, if we need to, we can either wait till January or we can do a special meeting to pay them. But I didn't see our invoices for tonight. So I will leave it up to your guys' discretion. We don't have any idea what they are. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming Robert's group sent us a bill. Uh, I didn't. I want to say I saw something from Crossroads, but I'm not sure. I a bill. <laughs> <laughs> How much was your bill, Tim? Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I guess we'll table that, and I'll see what the bills are. Have Dan send it to us if we have to. Maybe it, you know we just convene a special meeting to pay the bills, make it in and out. But I, I agree. I don't necessarily want to vote to pay something we haven't seen yet. So we'll hold off on that. So okay. uh, I guess the next thing is we can do the mayor's report. sheets um, if you guys would, you guys approved it right. so you just need to sign off on it they're the same sheet one would be for you folks and one would be for I just passed out a uh, IDAM inspected the landfill. Uh, they were called out here on a complaint. Uh, they came out in June, and this report was generated uh, in October. And I think the report, report says we recommend that you do this. So the next step is uh, an official citation. But I wanted to bring it to your attention. Uh, because we're going to have to uh, probably employ a uh, environmental engineer to help us navigate through this. So I just tonight I just wanted to let you know it's it's there, and uh, I'm not too concerned about it except for the uh, part where they recommend ventilation for, of methane gas. So just I wanted to get it on your radar. So are we looking at an expensive cleanup here? Or? Yes. I don't know how expensive. We're not allowed to have trees growing up on that? Evidently not. Am I allowed to sign this? 
so uh, I just wanted to uh, bring it to your attention tonight. We could do some mitigation on it that's not costly, but there's a couple things that is going to very expensive. And keep in mind, uh, at least half of that is not ours, so. Yeah, but the half that's failing probably is. I don't know. Mm -hmm. People dump back there all the time. Even on our side. Almost like we need some type of security just to watch it. I don't know. So do we need to plan monies for this then, is what you're saying? Like Probably it. down the road. But I, I just want to wait and see what uh, what uh, some of the people that we, we retain think. So this will be a 2019 issue then, right? Yeah, maybe 20. Okay. Well, this will be fun. <laughs> no, this will be unfortunate. Yeah. Good thing we got that land. Yeah. Good thing we got it cheap. Mm -hmm. uh, it, but anyway, um, work on the Greenway uh, progresses. Our, we're, it's moving forward. Um, the roundabout at Churchman and Arlington, a uh, public hearing on the 13th, that's a requirement by NDOT. So we'll have that November 13th at 7.30 out at Horner Park. And uh, we're uh, doing some engineering. Uh, we're gonna apply for funding. Uh, if you can picture the intersection of Churchman and Perkins and Southern and Perkins and Southern and Churchman, that little triangle there, we're going to uh, put uh, a, uh, uh, we want to put a roundabout in there that kind of looks like a bowling pin. Um, so uh, we're going to, we're, we were out there looking at it again today. Uh, so we're going to apply for some funding uh, at the end of November for that. And we have a drainage project that we're getting ready to start on Redford. Uh, in between uh, Biloxi and Killian. And then we got uh, some NDOT funding uh, announcement yesterday. Uh, we're going to do some work on South 4th in between Churchman and Ash. We're going to redo the road, but we're going to fill in where there's no sidewalks in that area uh, on the west side, and then we're going to put sidewalks on the east side of 4th Street from the church to Churchman. So that's getting ready. That'll happen starting the 19th of November. And then we want to get that project in before the end of the year. So um, that's basically it. Any questions? Did you see the email from Trent about a meeting for the Greenway? In yeah, December? he he wants to do one in December, and I took I, I responded back. He would have to get with Angel out at uh, Hornet Park, but I, I question whether it's too early. Um, dot requires it, and uh, I just think it's too early for two reasons. The one, the project's not until the middle of 20, and then if we do it on the 11th of December, I don't think the notice is, I think it's too soon for a notice. So, so I don't know. Um, let me know this is the last meeting of the year. If you want to continue serving, please let me know so I can pass it on to the council. I would hope that you folks would want to come back. Mark's not. A mark is one, a one-year deal. But uh, there's some uh, also uh, we're doing some legislative work and uh, When the legislator meet, legislature meets in the spring, they're going to introduce a bill that allows for uh, the school board to have a representative on the 
RDC that votes. So um, that's coming down the pike. So that was proposed last year, but never made it. I think it's got uh, steam this year. Who's the author of the bill? I don't know. We had a, we had a series of leg leg legislative things today at a meeting. They went through some things that we want to do in the spring, and uh, that was one of them. And then there's other bills that's, that they want to do. Uh, if your city has a road project that's over X number of dollars, uh, you can't just do it. You have to have a uh, referendum from the voters. I mean, it's, but it's millions of dollars. I mean, we would never see that as a small city. So they're, they're uh, tightening the reins a little bit, maybe a little bit too tight, but stuff like that. Same way with bond issues. Um, so, don't know. Any questions? No, sir. All right, I appreciate what you guys do. You guys have done well. Well, thank you for coming to all the meetings. It makes it a lot easier. It's nice to know what's going on and have a, a voice of reason, too. So. All right, I'm going to listen to the presentations. I look forward to it. Jim? Good evening. Um, my name is Jim Kaufman. Um, my family owns Exxon Houston on Main Street. Um, I'm the current treasurer of Nexop Beach Grove. Uh, we are a local nonprofit. Uh, it was organized a couple years ago uh, through the Chamber of Commerce. Um, last year, you guys agreed to uh, fund uh, the match for the Main Street plan. Um, that plan came out earlier this year. Um, we have a copy of it. I'm not sure if you guys have seen that copy or not, but um, I know you guys approved to pay part of the, that match, and we appreciate that. Um, it's a good plan. It has some good ideas out there for our Main Street, um, ways that we can improve, things that will help bring people here, bring businesses here, and bring more, more tax dollars eventually is the goal. So um, <clears throat> it's a good plan, and if you have any questions about it, we'd be happy to answer that. Um, based on that plan, our, our goal was to apply for a facade grant through OCRA. Um, we, were, we had that ball rolling. Um, this year, that last month, we, we put it to a halt. We had four of the 12 businesses in that plan um, backed out due to mostly financial issues. Um, this grant is a $600,000 grant <clears throat> that we would apply for uh, with a 25% match coming from the business owners. Um, four of those businesses backed out at the last minute, so um, our, our decision was to either continue to apply for this grant at 400 and leave 200 on the table or wait and apply in the spring. Um, so that's, that's what we're going to do, apply in the spring and hopefully get three or four uh, new businesses to come on, or if those other businesses are able to come up with their match, um, we will work with them and try and see what we can't do. Um, based on that match, like I said, it's 25% match, and that will go to pay for our grant administrator fee, which is 8%. It's usually what they charge. Um, a, an environmental study was about $5,000. The city did pay for that. We did get that back, and that came back clean, and everything was good for the environmental, environmental study. Um, our grant writer will adjust that and reapply that um, this spring with the additional addresses that we come up with. Um, there's a $5,000 labor study, um, and then on top of that, there's architectural fees and inspection fees. So it comes out to about $150,000 is what um, the local match would be. So um, we, we, anything that you guys could help would be great. Um, like I said, it's, it's something I, th I think will it'll be good for the city, for Main Street, um, and for the area. I think it'll... It, it, it'll liven up our Main Street. If you go to Greenfield, they finished up theirs uh, about a year or two ago. Greenfield just finished theirs. Same grant opportunities, um, same funding from Okra. Um, if you haven't been to those areas, drive through them because they're, they're beautiful. And it really, it really does give a, a start to economic growth and to changing the whole dynamic of a Main Street. So, um, Chris, if you have anything to say. Uh, <clears throat> I'm Chris Hinthorne. Uh, I own Hinthorne Agency at 411 Main Street. And uh, yeah, it's, this was kind of a first step to get a lot of things rolling as far as getting the Main Street um, revitalized, bringing in more businesses, filling all the empty buildings. Um, and a, a lot of communities have taken advantage of this, and it's, it's really made a difference for them. And they continue to grow from there. So it's, it's important, I think, for the city. And um, like I said,
like I say, if, hopefully if, if we uh, run into where we need some, some money or something, if you guys can, it's on your radar, that'd be great. So just kind of want to give you a heads up on where we're at and where we hope to be in the next year or so. Um, but, um, but yeah, do you have any questions for us about the project or what our goals are? But next spring, if you don't have the people to reach 600,000, you're going to go ahead and go with the 400,000 then? I, it, it'd probably be a little bit more. There are three that I that I know of who weren't in on the initial 12 that have already showed interest. Um, they will have to pay for the renderings themselves um, with the architect because uh, you have to you have to send those renderings into uh, Shipo for the environmental uh, study. So they will have to pay that because the first 12 were included with the planning grant. So um, the eight remaining that are going to stay on their renderings were already developed and already planned. Um, the scope of work is already developed, the price, the cost, and all that is already already decided upon. The three people that I, I need to talk to, they've already stated that they would be happy with paying that rendering um, if they're able to get on the grant. So I, I don't see a problem. I think we'll, we'll definitely come up with uh, $600,000 worth of work or 750 with the match. Um, I don't think that would be a problem at all because I, I know of at least three, and there's probably more businesses out there that uh, would be willing to participate. One of the Criteria in the beginning was there are 12 buildings included in the plan, um, and we wanted to make sure they're the, the biggest projects with the biggest bang for your buck, basically. So there were a few buildings out there that were 10 or $15,000 projects that we didn't want to have them take up a spot of the 12 uh, for the plan because they needed new windows and a new sign where other places needed a whole new configuration on the front of their buildings just because of the age. Uh, there's buildings on Main Street that date back to the early early 1900s, 1907, 1908. Um, my building myself was 1923. The place next to me was 1923 as well. So there's a lot of those buildings there are, are, are very aged and they, they are old and they need a lot of work to them. Um, <clears throat> I think most business owners have done well maintaining their buildings. A few of them have not, um, but a few of those properties I think would really benefit with this because it'll kind of give them that facelift and that extra push to hopefully improve themselves and then also the neighbors next to them. So. Um, so there's 12 businesses that are going to be listed on this grant? It, it could be more. There are 12 in the planning grant, so that's where we started with the 12 okay. because we made sure the 12 were, would have taken up that 750. Um, so we had one of them that was basically $125,000 that they dropped out. So just losing that one itself was a big, and we were hoping that to be basically the gym of Main Street, you know, to, to look beautiful with a three-story building there, but um, they're no longer part participating. So that opened up a lot. So with, I think, just that money there, we can fit a probably a couple, three buildings in with just that funds there. So um, I guess at least 12, hopefully more, depending on the actual scope of work and the price. So, and so what type of financial support do you think you would need from the Redevelopment Commission next year? Um, at, at basically, we take the, any, any support that is out there. Um, I know with the grant writing fees, the inspection fees, um, the inspection fees are probably the most. That's probably going to be about seven thousand for the architect and inspection fees. Um, basically, then what what that is is just protecting the property owners and the businesses here on Main Street, making sure the project's done right, um, the scope of work is followed, things that are are done the way that they're supposed to be done. Um, so that's something that would help. It, basically, anything. If the city helped with the environmental and that brought percentages down to about twenty four point one percent of a match as opposed to 25, so something as little as $5,000 of that match brought everybody's uh, con contributing match down 0.9% or so. So like I said, anything that anybody's willing to help, we are open to anything, so. I think we'd, I, I, again, speaking for myself, I, I can see offering support, mm -hmm. but you guys will have to come with specifics. Okay. Like, we need. We want. To, we want the RDC to help us by covering ten thousand dollars for architectural fees. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be correct? Something. We just can't yeah. say. That, that, oh yeah, and that, that makes sense. And that's you, you guys would have we to were, spell out and say as part of this grant we have X fee, Y fee, and yes. Z fee. We would like the Art Redevelopment Commission to cover these costs okay. to help this grant along, and because it'd have to be a one-time thing, but they'd have to be spelled out and applied, and we'd have to connect them to the TEF district. For which sure. I believe we can since it runs down to. Emerson Avenue. Correct. So, and if you needed help, Robert could help you on that as okay. far as spelling it out because mm -hmm. with RDC law, it's changing constantly. And what we can't or don't want to do is 
we can't like give you money to maintain a building, but we can give you one time funds and stuff like that. So Correct. yeah, as you guys and, get closer and you want that, or, you know, mm -hmm. it, and that makes sense. Cause like I said, that the 600,000, that's going to basically cover the actual work that is right. being done. The next 150, the match is basically covering all the other incidentals that just happen with, with federal money and grants that are out there, the inspections and all that. So, um, yeah, so tonight was just more of a discussion, just kind of telling you where we are at or as an organization with the grant process, um, because I know you guys have supported it from the beginning, so and we appreciate that, and the city has too. So. And when in the spring are you planning to submit this? It's due, it's due the end of June is when the grant application is due. Um, money from the business owners to the city will probably be due April, probably-ish. I haven't looked at the exact schedule. They just released them, I think, on Wednesday or Tuesday. Um, so we don't have the exact dates, but um, the actual deadline through Okra is in June. Well, so. second Tuesday or second Thursday of each month is when we meet okay. starting in January. Cool. So yeah. Yeah, come, cool. feel free to come back to mm -hmm. us. And if you need to talk to Robert, he'll give you a okay. card to make sure that you guys yeah. are on board and t tell you what to submit or how to submit it. We've okay. talked about that. And cool. I, yeah. I mean, as long as it's not like, well, we'd like $600,000. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Which we don't have, but. I think a reasonable number we'd be happy to support okay. because Very again, it'd be. I don't mind supporting this because the businesses are putting skin in the game, and it, we're not supporting one business. Mm -hmm. We're not picking, uh, you know, the trophy shop over all the other ones. It's to get a new roof. So that I think would favor. I think I'd be more in favor mm -hmm. of that. And cool. We had the the building that they painted red next to the post office. Mm -hmm. The guy who wanted to buy that wanted fifty thousand yeah. dollars, and I I couldn't see that because. Who on Main Street wouldn't want a new roof if they could get one and get the government to pay for mm -hmm. it? So that's why that idea. But this will this is kind of evenly matched overall. Mm -hmm. So I, I would favor it. Very good. Very good. Well, I appreciate that. So. Yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate it, guys, and thanks for all you do. Well, thank you for coming. Oh, no I'm problem. Sorry I made you wait. Oh no, it's all good. No worries at all. That's See, all good. So I time will bring an 11 year old to question you. There you go. There you go. <laughs> thanks, guys. <laughs> Anybody have anything else? Judy. Please. Angel. So I'm Angel McKenna. I work for the Parks Department at the Community Center. Um, we have a couple of projects next year that we're putting into Sarah Bolton. Um, one of them we've been raising funds for this fall, and we actually met our goal. We get a $13,000 grant from the IHCDA. They have a, pro uh, I guess it's a program called Creating Places. And um, they'll be awarding us $13,000 um, to put towards the playground that you see on the front here. The top picture is what it looks like now, which it's 20 years old. And uh, the bottom is a rendering. There's also a couple more pages inside here where you can see other pictures um, of what we're looking at. We may make some adjustments to it, just depends on the funding that we have for it. Um, the second page that you have is the actual invoice for it, so you can see the cost there. It does include installation. They're giving us a discount. But they also offer a matching grant on the equipment. So we're hoping that we will get a matching grant on that as well. So with the um, fundraiser, we have the grant, the matching grant, and then the matching grant from Game Time. We're looking at, we have around $54,000 to put towards this project. So we're pretty close to what we need. Um, if the RTC is willing to put in more towards that, then obviously that would cover those costs. But I think that we also have enough in our donation fund that we've collected um, for other projects or for this project or miscellaneous projects that we can put towards that and cover this cost completely. Um, but if you're interested in, you know, investing in something in Sarah Bolton or in this playground, then we can use those extra funds towards replacement of a playground in Don Chalice because that one is also in need of replacement. And we're looking, not necessarily doing it next year, but maybe the year after that. Just depends on, again, we'd need to get $65,000 at least together one way or another to replace the other one. So that's what we're, that's what those first few pages are about. The, um, the second project that's going on 
which will begin in Sarah Bolton next year, is the Greenscape <coughs> Commission is putting together a um, Sarah T. Bolton pollinator garden. So the last page is something that Jeff Mader had put together for us. It's um, behind the maintenance building. Um, there'll be a path that'll start along the um, west side of the building and it'll go back behind it. We're kind of in the fireworks where that area is. And we'll do this in phases, but we're looking at creating that whole space and making it into more of a, a nature area and a pollinator garden and with a path and place where people can go and just enjoy nature and then also honor Sarah Bolden by putting, I don't know, some of her poems there or just different things that people might enjoy to um, be around. And there's some pictures of some different flowers and different things. Most of probably everything will be native, um, which is what you really want in a pollinator garden. So those are just the two projects that we have going on in there. Um, obviously both those costs a lot, of, a lot of money to make happen. Greenscape Commission doesn't have any money, so everything that we'll be looking for will be in forms of grants um, and donations to go towards that project. Um, and also in-kind donations and people <laughs> volunteer help because we'll need a lot of that as well. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're working on now. Does anyone have any questions for me about it or? So you guys are 6,000 short of meeting the 60,000? Yes. And then your long-term plans are to replace the furniture, or furniture, the um, playground equipment down Don Chalice? Yes. Did you have to have that money by a certain time? Which money? The, the 6000 to cover the... Well, we'll have to have it to... We have to pay this before we get the... We'll have to have the money before we order right. the equipment. So, yes. Um, and like I said, I, I had spoken with Tom Hannon about this before I came. Um, and he wanted to make sure that I made you aware that we do have... We can cover that 6000 we, it's not like we can't, we don't have 6,000 so we can't put it in. We, but if you're able to help out with at least that 6,000, then we can put that 6,000 into the next playground. You see how that works. So the, the fundraiser and the grant money, those are specifically for the playground, right. the current one. So those will need to be, those funds are allocated for that, but. Any thoughts, guys? just wondering about how this would fit into the budget we have a fair amount of money that we haven't spent um, I mean honestly six thousand wouldn't impact us at all right, right. Um, I mean we I don't remember what year it was but we spent like a hundred thousand dollars on the park Remember that? We, the bathroom at the park we paid for and some mm -hmm. other stuff. So. Like ground equipment, security cameras yeah. just don't work. Yeah. Um, would we need some type of written proposal to vote on, Robert? Um, you could have a motion. It wouldn't necessarily be a written proposal. Um, if, if this McKenna has something that describes Well, this has the budget in it. Is that sufficient? I would say that's sufficient. So $6,000 would be enough? Is that yes. correct? I believe so. Um, I mean, I the total here is 60458 And like I said, with the with all the grants and the fundraising we have, we have 54493 So you really need about sixty. You really need about 6500 to 7000 If my mm -hmm. math is somewhat correct. Six thousand. Is that what you six thousand. Is that officially what you want to ask for? Yeah, because it's very I mean it's only a few dollars off of six thousand, I think, like forty dollars off, so anybody have any questions or concerns?
I guess I'd ask for one of our board members to make a motion then, if, if that's what they feel. If not, that's fine too. No, I'll make a motion to uh, give six thousand dollars to the parks department for the purpose of equipment. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And one of the reasons, and because the parks run through a TIF, because there's a TIF area connected to the parks, the RDC is able to do that. Um, my only question is on this nature garden, mm -hmm. will that be a, is our greenway going to go near or through that? It, it'll go on the other side. So the greenway is going on the west side of the creek, and this is on the east side of the okay. creek. Okay. It's hard. I can see your drawing, but it's hard for me to tell in the picture where what was. Me too. Don't it I is. Know, right it's now. a okay. little, yeah, it doesn't quite show. I'd hate time. to have you guys plan all that to have us have, a, <laughs> have an asphalt paver come right through and cover it all back up. Yeah, that would be terrible. No, we have kept that in mind for sure. Um, this plan is very is you know in the new stages, um, okay. so we don't have any numbers for this. Um, is this something that I could come back with later? I think that budget? the playground sure. equipment are legitimate things because okay. my my feeling on it is is that the sixty thousand we're putting into that park, kids will want to go play there, parents will want to be there. It's an attraction to our community. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think so too. Thank you. Okay. In 19, our first four years as a clean community through IDEM is up. So we re up from 19 to 23. And we have to have four new environmental uh, initiatives for IDEM. One of them is the city will pick up uh, pollinator gardens. So we will be uh, working as a city to develop these. So that's where some of the funding will come from. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Well, thank, also, hey, thank you. I know we've talked a couple times. I'm sorry to just get back to you, but no, this is fine. And when you guys get ready to do the the Don Charles Park and the, you know, even if I'm not around, come back to the Redevelopment Commission and ask. It never hurts to ask. And That's good to know because I really Well, no, I think, <laughs> I mean, I, again, these are projects that the whole community is going to benefit from. And it's putting money, it's not picking a business or this or that. It's picking for the whole community. And that's, right. it's our tax dollars. So, no, please come back when you have these types of projects. Because it, it helps, it helps attract residents, hopefully permanent residents. And it boosts the quality of life in our city, which is what we want. So, thank you very much. Don, I forgot to, when I was up here, the council would like for, to have somebody come to the December meeting and talk about their four-line budget. <laughs> I can do that. I, 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 I'm, I couldn't get there because, like I say, I was railroaded into coaching. But I told the council that that was my fault because uh, he had a choice to, to make either go watch his son play basketball or a council meeting, and I told him every time go watch your son play yeah. basketball. Sure. But so, yeah, I, I'll be I'll be happy to be there. Robert, one of the things I wanted to talk about, and you can even talk from there, but so we were getting all these emails back and forth. The requirements that we have to meet as far as reporting. In the past, I understood we had to do an annual report to the city council and get them to approve a budget, and then there's um, in July we have to issue that no excess of funds that by Jeff June to, by June 15th which we do and then there's another one in the spring and the, the June 15th is a, is a letter um, based on a determination that uh, either we do or we don't have sufficient funds to pass through money to the overlapping tax right. Right. This is a brand new requirement that was passed by the 2018 legislature that went into effect July 1st. It's got language that nobody is quite sure what some of it means. <laughs> it says we have to do the, the, what we have to do annually is we have to uh, make a presentation. territory within an allocation area. That means any 
other governmental unit that has physical territory uh, within a TIF district. Uh, we have to invite them to a presentation at a meeting of the RDC. That's, that's the first uh, new requirement. That one shouldn't be that burdensome. We hold a meeting, we, we, we notify the school, we notify the four townships, uh, we notify the city, Second thing could be burdensome, uh, but probably won't be, and that is one member of the RDC, uh, if requested um, by any of these uh, Overlock and Jackson districts that have territory within the TIF district, we have to go to their meeting. So, Dr. Kaiser wants you to make a present, one person. Townships want us to. We need to do that. Obviously, the city council is already pretty much doing that. Right. We just have to add a little more information uh, from what you're already doing. Um, so I called the attorney for the Department of Local Government Finance, and she says annually. Does that mean calendar year? Does that mean fiscal year? They don't know. And they said. Okay. There's no penalty in the statute for not doing it, uh, but the purpose of it is is to inform these other taxing units about your, your TIF district's plans and through the RDC, so before they adopt their budgets, that's that's the purpose of it. Um, um, so that's that's what all those emails. Uh, yeah, I mean it was just. They were long emails and they were inconclusive, indecisive, and you know, it's like, well, you got all these requirements, but we're not really sure what they mean. So for right now, you're okay, but yeah. yeah and, and, and that's kind of where I got to be with it. It's like, I don't, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, and they couldn't tell me for sure, you know. It's clear as mud. Which taxing unit, so I named all those that I thought Jeff confirmed that he believed that those were the only ones that had territory, the townships, the county, um, uh, the library, um, uh, the school, city council, um, within uh, our, our tip district. So do we, we'd have to get like a, four, we'd have to have like our presentation and then we'd have to mail it to all those? We would have to invite them to one of our meetings. Okay. All of them. And then if one of them or more or all one or more <coughs> all of them said we want you to send somebody to our meeting, then we have to do that as well. Okay. Well I guess try to get that set up with Jeff and then we can send out a notice or a notice to invite him say, you know, this spring or or next fall. I would say next spring. Yeah, we could do it next, like April. Make it like let's plan for like April's meeting. That way they'll, you know, because yeah, that makes sense. And then that way, I I just want to make sure because, like I said, the, when Jeff brought that up, I started reading it. and I'm like, well, it got confusing. That's why I asked you because I I wasn't yeah. I mean, they don't make laws in simple English. They 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 try to yeah. Well, this. And that's what's really sad. I mean, if you try to read the redevelopment statute overall, it's really confusing. This one I found, yeah. other than the word annual, somewhat clear. Yeah, so like I say, if you'd work on that, and then just, like I say, maybe by February's meeting, we'll have it laid out. 
then we can lay out a report or whatever or the invitation and decide what we're going to present it, I don't think anybody would ever come anyway or ask but we just want to make sure we're fall again I want to make sure everything we do here is legal and transparent so let's just stay on top of that so we don't have that issue hmm. um, did anybody have anything else am I forgetting anything the uh, Kevin Parsons contract yes sure that We approved it last month. We just didn't have the contract okay. to sign. Now you have it. Uh, uh, I met with Kevin and with John Mott of his firm and uh, from um, well, yes, that's who I met with. We we had invited uh, uh, Brad Merriweather, but Brad uh, Brad had uh, pneumonia. Okay. Well, yeah, you've got that contract. I have a copy. Okay. Of well, we will sign. We can sign that, and if you make more copies or whatever, we can come in and sign them. But I, I know Kevin's not going to do anything until he has the signed contract, and I'd like to get him going on that because honestly, I'd like to be able to uh, have something, you know, to where if we wanted to start this thing next summer or spring or summer, we could. Because uh, let me bring this up, and uh, he's already signed it. Uh, there's some attachments which aren't stapled. Also, um, submitted a copy at our request of his certificate of, of insurance. Okay. All of this makes up the contract. Okay. Um, I think page two or three is the signature. I can hand it up. Yeah, right there. You want to see his certificate? I trust him. Okay. Email is that what you were talking about? Mm -hmm. I just did see it. Most of the discussion wasn't over this two or three page contract. It was he had a two two things in contracts that related to um, when we get to the actual construction phase of being able to use documents that already exist from the city uh, that control uh, what the contractor has right. to do. Okay, well, I mean, yeah, we're, like I say, we're ready to move forward, and if you can get that to him, he can start. I'll send him an email tomorrow, let him know that we signed it tonight, and you'll get it to him, and, you know, by next spring, I'm hoping we'll have something. Yeah, and I think that um, if, if you, um, if you want to either get that back to me, we can scan it. And you can take it right now. Yeah, okay. I've signed it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I can get a copy to Dan. Um, right. I, I know you can, so I'm not worried about that. That's, That's the mayor's. Okay. I'll give that to him here after this. Okay, so we've taken care of the everything I think we need to take care of for the year. <laughs> Anybody think of anything else? Any comments, additions? <laughs> like I say, I'm a little scatterbrained, so if you guys have anything, please. If not, I'd say it was a good meeting and it was a good year, and I thank all of you all for your service. Um, Again, we are a volunteer organization, and uh, Kathy types out the minutes every month, a lot of minutes, gets them to Dan. Um, it's a thankless job. It's a pain <laughs> in the neck job. She doesn't have to listen to this meeting once. She has to listen to it two or three times and sometimes <laughs> go back. So, And she's done it for seven years now. So seven years without a penny and all those hours. And, you know, I mean, you know, People talk about public service. I think that's probably the most noble, noble form of public service in that she's asked for nothing, but she's donated her time. And, uh, I, I, you know, people like that don't necessarily get recognized, and, and that's a sad thing. And, you know, when you, you know, and this is the true sense of community in that we have people like Jim who volunteer and 
this is why communities will be great or will fail because individuals step up not for their own game but for the the greater good of, of the community and say I want to make a difference realizing that as that community gets stronger their businesses will get stronger or their homes will gain value so I thank Mark Tara who we wish her happy you know she uh, she left a newborn at home to come here tonight and again that's a, another type of sacrifice uh, my wife didn't meet my son alone until he was like nine so <laughs> um, I thank her very much and I thank Dr. Kaiser it's not like he's got a school system to run or anything or games to go to but again he takes time out of his busy day to be here as a non-voting member and uh, again it just shows you the incredible people we have in our community and that we should be proud of all of them so I thank you all and with that I will ask for a motion to adjourn I'll make a motion. A second? I'll second. The meeting is adjourned at 8.